Blurring Out show. It's the Blurring Out with Eric Blair show backstage at the 2006 Warp Tour with Tim of Rise Against. Thanks for having me. No problem. What is your political viewpoint? Uh, very broadly. I mean, we play we play subversive music. We play an extension of what what protest music was back in the day with bands like Neil Young and Buffalo Springfield. You know, we play uh, music that's that's a rally cry for change and awareness. And we play what, to me, is an extension of, of punk rock in the vein of bands like Black Flag and The Descendants and uh, the Dead Kennedys. You know, and all those bands. Now, at what point in your early youth? Did you realize there's a need for a change in the world and I have the voice to be able to tell the world about it? Um, I guess like going to a lot of punk rock shows in Chicago, uh, back in the day in Chicago and in the hardcore scene, shows were a lot more about information and awareness and change and less about just entertainment. You didn't just go to see a band and just to like, you went to have a good time, but you, but you went and these bands would present you with all kinds of information and like different campaigns, whether it was like animal rights or the crisis in East Timor or just things that were going on in the world that were being sort of buried by, you know, major news outlets or whatever. And it was really eye-opening stuff for a person, you know, my age, like I was like 15 or 16 years old to be uh, exposed to. And that certainly combined with like, I did a lot of reading when I was a kid and, and I think when you read books like 1984, Fahrenheit 451, or Brave New World at the age of 15, that blows your mind. That stuff blows your mind. And then when you start taking that book and you realize, wait, this isn't totally fictitious. This has got some parallels to the real world, the world that I'm living in. You know, I grew up in a suburb in Chicago, a very sheltered suburb in Chicago. And so a book like that is like dynamite. You know, and it certainly, it, it certainly uh, it got my fire going and still, still burning the day. If you were president, what were just two changes that you would make right now? Probably the, the distribution of money and poverty and, and, and how that affects the world and the things that, 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 money is spent, that money is spent on, you know what I mean? Like whether it's like defense and the military, you know, or just the, the, the frivolous things that our government spends money on and how easy it would be to, to really just end things like poverty in the world. You know, that would be something that would be, that would be, um, that would be a, a lot of fun to be in that position and change, you know? And, um, I guess, and, uh, uh, quite simply, our foreign policy. You know, I mean, it's not a, it's not a, a, a fun world to be an American in anymore, and that's kind of due to America's foreign policy. And it's sort of, you know, I, I tour Europe and Japan and Australia, and in uh, the UK, and to go there and have to explain to people, you know, the the country that I come from nowadays, you know, it's. It's a, it's a weird place to be. Is there a certain a sense of resentment when you toured in other countries? Definitely. And I certainly, I certainly toured, I toured in Europe pre-9-11, I toured in Europe post-9-11. I toured in Europe pre-war in Iraq and post-war in Iraq. Big difference. Big difference. I mean, and like, that difference, and not so much like in the crowd we play a show, yeah. but when I'm hanging out in a bar in Berlin at the end of the night, you know what I mean? I'm just meeting people and I'm like, oh, I'm American. You know what I mean? Like, it got to the point where someone asked me what I was, I'm like, oh, I'm Canadian. <laughs> How did Rise Against get together? Uh, we uh, kind of came out of the ashes of a number of different bands, um, spread out all over actually. Our guitar player Chris from a band called Reach the Sky from Boston. Our drummer Brandon was from a band called Pinhead Circus out of the Denver area. Joe played in a band called Idiot Fingers Louie out of Chicago. And I played in a number of local bands in the Chicago area. And so um, there comes a point where the people that you play with, um, you know, you realize that they're not as serious about it as you are. And you say, okay, they kind of get weeded out. And then you find people who are serious. And we all, we've, the four of us found each other, and we wanted to power through and go ahead, and that's where we've been. That, that was six years ago, and here we are today. Now, what do you love about the Warp Tour? Uh, the community out here, the, the people, the bands. You know, um, it's a great place. There's a good vibe out here. We, you know, when you tour for six years, you you meet a lot of people who occupy this certain slice of your life, this small six-week tour of, you know, North America in your life, and then you never see them again because that's the nature of what we do. I tour, he tours, you know, our yeah. friends tour, like, you know, see each other. Warp tours where we all come together, and it's like, you know, I guess it, it'd be like the same thing as like some sort of conference for some sort of business that you're in. You know, it's like it's a conference where we all say, "Hey, what's going on? I haven't seen you since '03 when we toured UK together, or like I haven't seen you since that Australian tour together. How you doing?" And it's like people, you know, they've been married and they have kids, and like you know, everything changes, and like you hang out. And what's also interesting about Warp Tour is that when this tour ends, we're trapped here in this parking lot. We don't go anywhere. Like we sit here until about three in the morning until our buses leave which is like, sounds like a scary thing, but it forced you all to hang out. And you pull out some barbecues and some tables and chairs, and you sit, instead of everybody running off to their hotel room to go like chill and like watch a movie, we all hang out, you know? Sort of out of necessity, but it's a good thing. You know, it's like we all hang out, 
There's a lot of ideas exchanged, a lot of fun to be had. You know, it's a good time. You have an amazing voice. I have Thank heard you. you sing. Tell me how you take care of your voice on the road. Um, I, I, I go really easy on it. I don't stay out too late. I uh, try not to at least. Um, I don't drink or smoke, uh, but I never really have. I warm up before each set. That's a, that's a big deal. To go from like a talking voice to what I do on stage is totally different. And I need a little sort of buffer zone in between the two. I try to warm down. I try to keep pretty quiet after, like, in the, like, the first 10 minutes after a show. Um, Warped has been pretty easy on me because it's only a half hour. If we headline, we'll play for over an hour, you know? So Warped has been actually all right. A half hour is eight or nine songs. That doesn't really hurt me too bad. Now tell me about the new record. The uh, Suffer and the Witness just came out last Tuesday, the 4th of July. Awesome. Um, as of this morning, it's in the top 10 billboard. Nice. Uh, which is the first time we've ever done that. You know, we have the number 10 song. How record. does that make you feel right now? I just I, want to... It's so surreal. Someone just told me like an hour ago. So, That's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like I can't, I can't even grasp it. Yeah, we've never even been to the billboard before. You know, it's something that's amazing that we never really thought would happen. And for someone to wake me up this morning and be like, good morning, you have the top 10 selling record yeah. in America. You know, and I'm like, wow. You know, it's hard to even like, you know, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just going on my day and I do interviews and like play shows and like I have fun on, with my friends and like, so to have someone tell me that's like, it's hard to even grasp. Now tell know? me, tell me the inspiration for this new record. Um, a lot of different things and I guess uh, real broadly the world around us, you know, and, and the, the tumultuous political climate that we live in. Um, a lot of things like uh, what we're doing to the environment these days, you know, the unsustainable economy that we live in. All these things are are elements to what we write about, you know, and, and that's that's talked about. A lot of that's talked about is uh, our cause and effect relationship with the world. How like everything we do here, from the shoes we wear to the cars we drive, affects somebody living, you know, thousands of miles away from here on the other side of the planet. And like it's we're all tied into that. We're all together in that, you know. And we're tied into that suffering, you know, like whether it's like a sweatshop or the decimation of a rainforest so we can clear it for, to, for cattle, you know, in Brazil somewhere. And it's, it's easy to become sort of desensitized that or at least detached from that. And, but when you think about the bigger picture, you realize that we're all tied into that. We're all on the same planet. We're all in the same world. I know it sounds crazy. But I'm seeing a lot of rights being taken away from us slowly but surely. What do you think about that? I think that's totally true. And it's funny that we talk about books like uh, 1984 yeah. and Friend of 451, where it's like you read these like books about utopian societies, and like, and you read it, and it's and it's so almost to your in your head at first, so unrealistic. Like I'm not gonna live in a time where a Big Brother's watching me. Like this is so George Orwell, you're crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and. I think that, and it does seem crazy, it seems like nobody would ever let the world turn into that. And like, if someone put up the proposal to turn our world into this utopian society today, we'd all say no. But if they took baby steps. Exactly. But if they took baby steps and yeah. sort of chipped away at our rights and our privacy and little things, and they said, listen, if you don't give us your cell phone information, someone will bomb you from yeah. Iraq, yeah. you know? And they'll scare us from thinking that. And we'll believe it because we're afraid. Because we've seen people bomb the Trade Center. We've seen wars happen. We've seen people die. And so it's like, wait, maybe I should be afraid. Maybe I should give over all my cell phone information. Maybe I should do that. These little baby steps that don't seem so crazy. You know, they say if you have nothing to hide, then you should just give it out. And let's and like, yeah, like there's some, there's some truth to that. But it's those baby steps that they're going to get you with. You believe in a unified world. But there are so many people nowadays, and there's such a spirit of individuality, not a positive spirit of indiv individuality, but of selfish spirit. What do you think about that? It's certainly frustrating, and like I sympathize with those people because like there are certain times I think where we're all one of those people where you become so overwhelmed with the world's problems that you don't know what to do. You know, you wake up in the morning, you're like, I can't change everything today. That's so frustrating, you know. And I think that one of the approaches that that I personally take is that, and with this band, you know, when someone's like, What are you doing? Are you really making a difference? Are you really changing the world? It's like, you know what? I'm not changing the world today on July 12th. You know, like today the world will not change today. But just because I can't change everything doesn't mean I shouldn't try to change anything at all. You know, and like I, I live in this world where I play a band and I, and I have fans and I have the the opportunity to have an impact on people. And so I do that, you know. I do that to like to, to get out to people. And um, and yeah, and they're, they're, the people that are looking at the world from a more selfish sort of view, I'm sure they're just so overwhelmed. And all they want is they want an iPod, and they want an air conditioned house, and they want you know a satellite radio, and they want their own little world. You know, it's all customized and personalized to them. You know, and so it's and the world is an overwhelming place to be. So there's a part of me sympathizes with that, but obviously those people need to get mobilized. Those people need to wake up and realize that they're, they're, they they won't even have that if they don't you know at least take part 
and what's happening in the world around them. Thank you very much. Blaring out with Eric Blair with Tim from Rise Against, signing off.